Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm out again. Uh, it's Monday the 1st of April. It's Easter Monday. All the best. I hope you had a fantastic Easter. Uh, all nice and relaxed and got out and did a bit of fishing. So I'm back out again. I just literally got down to Lower Stoff Nest Point again at the back of Bird's Eye. It is now quarter past five. Um, I haven't checked the tides or anything, but it's only two days after my last session, so I expect last time it was high tide at half twelve-ish in the afternoon, so it should be about half two, quarter to three. So, yeah, it should be about two hours into the ebb. Uh, I'll check the tides when I get down there and set up. Um, so it'll be high tide tonight, yeah, around about half two, three o'clock in the morning. I'll, I'll just double check and get the exact times. But uh, I've just got down here. The place where I wanted to fish was the same place last time, looks clear. So I'm going to get quickly set up uh, and I'll get straight back to you. I'm going to do it this way around uh, today because I want to make the most of the sunlight and I'll probably then just leave the camera running and try and get as much footage as I can because when it's dark tonight, I don't know how much footage I'm going to get. I've got a floodlight, but um, I'm not going to leave the camera running in the dark. So I'm going to quickly get my gear together, get set up and I'll get back to you. See you in a minute. I just finished uh, setting up didn't take too long actually I just put everything away so one thing I did forget I kept saying two or three times pick up the bolly pick up the bolly but I forgot to pick up the bolly <laughs> but um, it's a bit stiffer breeze than I was expecting there's a little bit more chop on but it looks manageable and it looks a lot more fishy if that means it makes sense a bit more slop on the water so I've just set both rigs up I've got exactly the same rig and rod on the big one as I used the other day but the only thing I've changed is the spool and should change it to mono because with the slop on it and casting at a distance and any potential rocks the mono is going to be a lot more abrasion abrasion resistant and then the braid I'll show you them in a minute and the other rod the laffy Laff long cast rod exactly the same rig um, I'll just sw swatch switch the reels around so I've got the Shakespeare Salt 7000 on that one just because I'm thinking tonight <clears throat> I might just swap over to exactly the same rig as that one a, a panel rig or an up and over um, just a big bait but we'll see how the fishing goes so I'll switch around okay hope you can see me the sun's a bit awkward for the minute with the wind because the wind's sort of in my face but I think it's a bit of a southwesterly and there are a few waves cracking over the, the wall now just on the other rod um, so I have to be careful of this my phone camera I've got my GoPro over there but just looking at the way the line's sitting in the water and the, the way that the wind's putting a bow in the line I'm a bit hesitant to put two two rods in at the minute because especially with braid and this wind I don't want it that that main line going around those uh, wooden groins because bad uh, just game over then um, lose a lot so it might be a case of swap, sw uh, swap the rods around put the big rod on the left but I don't really want to do that because of the potential problems that's going to occur later on if I do get a big fish the uh, 
the concrete bar in front of me and then the wooden groins themselves. I'd rather stay with this here because at least there's a clear gap. Um, and if the wind dropped later on tonight, I can just plop that in a deep gully. That was sort of like between the second and the start, the start of the rest of the groins. This nice little deep hole there, and there's not much, not much flow. Though it wasn't the other day, might be today, but that's the plan at the minute. I'm just going to hold fire with the second rod for a minute, and just I mean, that's holding nicely with six ounces. It's not bouncing out at all. I'm glad I chose the mono now because the braid would probably just be bouncing out all over the place. There's no stretch in the braid. At least we've had him. 80 yards of mono out, it's going to be a lot of stretch in the line. So I managed to set my gear there, I wish I'd bought my body but I'll live with it, it's not too bad. I've got my car right behind me, just to the left, but so I'm checking if I'm swinging the lead over my head in the night, there's no, no chance of smacking the car. So yeah, I've got the Blue Ocean rod here, 14 foot, with an Anafe Vigor reel, that's with a 25 pound Shakespeare salt line. Uh, that's a 60 pound ASIO shock leader, pulley rig, panel hook, 3.0, must have like a 2.0 bait holder. I've got a muscle, worm, lug worm, and squid wrap on there, and a 6 ounce gripper lead. And on this rod, I've just got, um, as I just said, the long cast 14 foot Shakespeare salt wheel, 40 pound braid. 60 pound shock leader, 70 pound rig body, two snoods of 25 pound. I've just got some salted lug on there and tip with squid. Yeah, right, hey, then. So I'm not even cast in yet, so I'm going to get these cast in now, see what the state of the tide's like and uh, if it's pulling much. But it definitely looks more uh, fishy today, doesn't it? It's definitely not, not up to high tide yet. Okay, so I've said it's not been out long. I've just missed a really, really good bite on this rod, big rod with the muscle worm and uh, squid wrap. The whole rod chip, I saw it shake, and then, and then it just literally went and went. Grabbed the rod, wound down, struck, but nothing. Really good bite, really big bite. But I'm just casting to the same place it was before. This one went a little bit left. I'm going to up tide it to the right a little bit more after this cat. I managed to get the left rod out, not too far. Where well, I said I was going to fish it. Oh, that was a really good bite. It was like a green bite. Put a nice pull down and then it just really went slammed down. Right, I'm going to have to uh, get the uh, torches all set up and the headgear and the lights and my rod. Probably got another hour, an hour and a half and we start losing the light. And then we have to hunker down and get the suit on. Nothing. I've seen nothing so far on the left one. But I'm just thinking if I do switch over to another polystyrene egg on that one, I'll probably uh, swap the spools over as well and go for mono. Just put the left rod in because I had a bit of a slack liner. Nice white in. I'll get this back, again just hooked in the top lip this one, but on the bottom one, I wonder why it was heavy coming in, 
The big brown edible crab. The size of that. I'd definitely be a keeper. Ooh Unfortunately, he's lost one arm. He's a bit armless, but I'll, I'll, I'll put him back. <laughs> I mean, legally, I don't know exactly know the, the sizes, but that's uh, a definite keeper that would have been. But I've let him go. But we haven't blanked anyway. But the salted uh, lugworm seems to work on the top snood. Let's keep an eye on this other rod in case we have another gravy lurch down. Right, I'm going to get this bait again and back out a little bit further this time. I've just looked online at the tide times and that. So it's going to be low tide at 10 to 9 tonight and high at half past three in the morning. So just looking along here, the lot well I'm fishing here, there's a floodlight directly under my car, and one to the left, and one the other ones don't seem to be working. But uh, so probably not and lights with the factory and all the rest of it, so it's probably gonna be light enough where I am. So I might need the torch just to see the rod tips but before whiting, I've just cast the big bait out, strapped on a load of uh, salted lug and another strip of squid, just bulked it up a bit. Got that cast out to the right, but the tide is settling down, I'll probably go straight in front of me next time. It's nice warm evening, wind's dropping. Big white, and I just measure this one. There's 
just under 30. So it's definitely a keeper. I know a little white him. Nice and chunky little one. Definitely biting a lot better tonight, well, especially at this time of night. Anyway, pretty much uh, every minute. So I think that's no, yeah, number four. We'll get him back. Nice, nice plump fish. Good future stocks. Well, I'm here, just in the middle. I'll leave that for a minute. I was just about to cast this one out. I've just refreshed this big bait, brought it in. I just put on three or four of the salt with lugworm squid. There's a bit of muscle in there. Okay, I'm gonna get this cast out now. And wind the leader up, make sure the knot's at the back, and working forward, I'm not crossing over the line, I'm not crossing over the knot. Working up towards the front of the spool. Winding down the excess line and then just leaving it a minute for a boat to form and the lead to grip in and then winding up the excess slack to look just fill enough tension on the tip. Tiny little white him, just on salted lug and squid. We'll get this straight back. Smallest one yet. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to cast with my microphone and wire on, so it's going to be a bit too dangerous and tricky. I don't want to get anything tangled or in the way. So 
I'll just unplug that for the minute so you might get a bit of wind noise. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see me. It's gone eight o'clock. We're losing the light. I'm going to fish on into the night. If I get any fish, I'll try and put them on. If not, I'll sign off now and uh, hopefully see you again in the morning. That's about quarter past nine. Now I thought I was just thinking, you know, I thought I'd do this just to push myself a little bit more <coughs> and see if it's true. I mean, is fishing at night, sea fishing actually better in the day? Um, it was good when I got here when it was light, but now it's dark, it's slowed up. But I've got the big baits on, big rods. But uh, as far as viewing spectacle, no, you, I mean, if you're going to film, you need to film in the day, really. I mean, it's obviously pitch black, you're not going to see anything, can't explain anything uh, while I'm doing things. The light's a bit tricky. I've got the floodlight with me. Um, I thought I'd just, you know, do it for me, push myself a little bit more. See if it, the hype's true. Time will tell. But you've got to be out there, you've got to be in it to win it, I suppose. I suppose it all depends on the tide. I mean, it's going to be high tide at about half past three in the morning. <clears throat> so it's a fair way to go yet. But I'm going to keep busy. I'm going to make up some fresh wraps. I'll probably do some big mackerel and squid and heron and squid and see if we can get um, well, any, anything really. Uh, I've got mussels. I've got a load of lug left. need to use it up. If I don't use them tonight, I'll have to uh, salt them or blanch them. Because they're going to be no good for the next session and I can freeze them. But it's warm, the wind's totally died down. And so it's the fishing at the minute, so. Missed that really big bite, really good bite when I first got here. It was out five, five minutes or so. And it absolutely hoofed over. It's a couple of really good trembles, a couple of good two or three pulls, and then it, the third or fourth pulled down, it just went, but somehow missed it. But at least we're not sort of like one positive. I've got all these lights and the factory behind me, so I can still see the rod tips, no problem. So I don't think you'll be able to, I'm not sure. No, so you can't, not unless I have the floodlight pointing up at the rod tips. But right, I'm gonna go and get some uh, wraps made up. I've just literally cast them out, so I'm probably going to give them half an hour casts. Bring them in, make sure the leads are not tripped out, make sure I'm not getting crossed over, and just keep busy. Of a 
hole in the ozone, eh? Bloody stinks, it's bloody sulfur and all. Eggy. Okay guys, it's 12 o'clock. It's been really, really quiet. I'm gonna give it to one o'clock and then I'm gonna call it quits, I think, unless things change dramatically. But what I've done is, just refreshed the baits, done mussels, squid and salted lug, wraps on both rods. I brought the left rod in, because it was, it was on a up and over dropper rig. But when I was bringing it in, You've got like a, a good three, four foot hook link once the dropper. And I didn't want to risk, if I did ever catch anything, getting it snagged. So I've just made up another pulley rig. Put the pulley rig on that one, cast it out nearly the groin. Um, about half an hour ago, the lad came down and said there's a few bass I've always patrolled along there. Which I think that was uh, that bite on the right hand rod earlier on. But I'm going to give it to one o'clock, um, and then if nothing, I'm going to call it quits, and then probably give it a day off tomorrow, and then Wednesday probably get out in the afternoon and do a sort of afternoon session, sort of 12 o'clock on till seven o'clock till it gets dark, up at Walcott or somewhere quite local. So anyway, hope you enjoy the video. Hi right, guys, how you all doing? <clears throat> Just a quick video. I've just been out to uh, pick up some worms, going to go out fishing tomorrow, Saturday. I've changed my mind, I was going to go today, but the wind's been really strong the last two days, really strong, um, really gusting, about 35 to 40 kilometres an hour, so I suppose on the beach it's going to be just too much. So I thought I'll go tomorrow, it's supposed to be a light 14, so sort of like 20 kilometres an hour, south, southwesterly. I've got plenty of bait, I've just been out to a guy, um, Julian's his name, just lives sort of in and around Norwich, quite local, um, to pick up some worms. He was out yesterday digging. I just got 100 worms off him, so I've got plenty of bait for tomorrow. I've got lugworm, I've got squid, I've got some fresh mackerel and herring, which I picked up from uh, the supermarket yesterday. Um, I've got some big crevettes or whole uh, raw king prawns with a bit of squid wrap on there. I just made them up. I'll probably bang one of them out for hopefully a cod or a bass or a big fish anyway. Um, I've got plenty of wraps. I've got some, I thought I'd try, I never tried them before. So I was doing three for a tenner. So I've got a packet of the big crevettes, a packet of the uh, whole prawns, the cooked shell on prawns. So I thought I'd give that a go. Um, and some mussels. I've got all sorts of bits and pieces. So it's plenty of bait for tomorrow, but since I've got 100 worms, what I thought I'd do is, um, just going to make up a few now, only sort of like three or four, um, lugworm and squid wraps for a sort of like a poly panel rig. Um, not going to do too many, ideally you want to do it there and then, so it's all nice and fresh, but what I've got all day here at home, I thought uh, I'll make up a couple of wraps ready to go. Um, and then I'll make some more on the bank as, as and when I need it. So we've got some absolutely lovely big fat lugworm here. Some nice ones, all nice and fresh, all wiggling away, look. Really nice and lively. So I thought I'd do two or three of these. I've got one of the Shepherd's Crook uh, baiting needles. And I'm just going to go through one end. Push this all the way down. Just like that. Then I'm going to get another one, a top and tail it. In fact, I'm going to pull this right up so I can work with it a bit better. Like that. And I'm going to very loosely just wrap it. I'm not going to go mad if you'll stay still. Yeah. 
I'm not going to put any pressure on this. It's always a wriggler. He's putting up a fight. <laughs> right, let's get this wrapped. It's going to go light. I don't want to burst it too much or at all if, if possible. This one's a lot longer, so what I'm going to do is just fold it back gently. Let's push this down a bit, make it easier. So when I get to the end, I'm just going to get that tail. That's it. Just put that tail back. Whip on the tail. So it's about a couple of dozen turns. And I've got some squid, which I've cut into strips. <clears throat> it's going to lay a bit of squid. Um, put it on like that, so hold it. Lay it on the back. And then I'm going to do exactly the same. And hopefully, <clears throat> And get a decent fish so uh, I'll make a couple of these up probably do a two two up pulley panel rig on this with a couple of size ones or size two uh, one o's or two o's that'll do for now just gonna push it over There you go. It's going to make a couple of them up. And I'll get back to you. <clears throat> Probably just going to do about four. And then I say I've got, there's a hundred worms. So I've got enough for a couple of sessions easy. Um, if I don't use them all, I'll probably uh, bleed them and then salt them and see what they're like. I was thinking about doing that anyway, just to just, just to sort of like have a comparison um, whether fresh baits work or salted lug um, I'm not going to use a hundred I'm pretty sure so I'm just going to do another one it's going to get a nice worm go through the fat end first just try and keep that needle inside all the way down to the tail Twenty quid for a hundred. I'll leave a link. I think mean, that's a, a bargain, really. You know, someone's got to go out. He's saying it's been uh, tough at the minute with the weather and the wind and the tides. So twenty quid for a hundred worms. It's literally fifteen minutes drive from where I am. So well worth it. Fresh bait. Dug last night. Got back up about seven o'clock last night. I was going to go yesterday, but I say he didn't get back till seven o'clock ish so i went around this morning first thing in the morning eight o'clock and picked him up cheers mate they look good baits way down to the end nice bit of squid so just gonna poke that on so it's just so it's a purchase onto and then when you do it make sure you bend it down fold it down so when you wrap it it's not going to cut into it it's just going to mold around the worms And that'll do for now because I'm going to put the two hooks on and then probably give it another little bit of a wrap. So I don't want to go crazy. I don't want to really uh, bound them up too tight. I would, have, I would have loved to have got out yesterday and the day before, but well, obviously on a week off at Easter holidays, but I ain't going to drive all an hour 
an hour there if it's unfishable with the wind and everything it's pointless Ooh, that's a squirter and I don't I, I keep going and then it's too rough and the wind and I end up just going in the Galston River and I don't want to keep going back there time after time after time So I don't want to do too many, I just want a couple so I can quickly get there, you know how it is. Whack a bait on, cast it straight out. You never know. And then we'll make some uh, fresh ones on the bank. But with a bait like this, it could be anything. Bass. Ray. Smoothie, dogfish, even a Call of Duty. <laughs> That'd be nice, wouldn't it? I mean, just going to do a half itch. Not going to. That's it. Right, that's it. Bait's made. I'll see you down on the bank tomorrow. Or on the beach tomorrow. Let's hope for a few fish. Get a few pulls of the stream. Alright, take care.